Would you like to learn to bake bread on the Jiko the easiest way? And are you looking for the easiest, tastiest and healthy bread recipe? Now this is the video to watch. Watch out as we do exactly that. We want to make very tasty bread on the Jiko. Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And of course, in our recipes, we tone down the ingredients so that we can reduce on those calories and yet maintain the sweetness of our recipes. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and just hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload new content. So we will get right into the recipe and before we do that, let's pray because God is the one who gives us creativity. Indeed, Father, just grant that this process will be a blessing for me and for my viewer. Glorify your name as we work through this recipe in Jesus' name. Amen. We have our flour right there. I always like to mix uh, all-purpose flour and atta or whole wheat flour, you know, for just for our bread to be healthy. So I'm going to put in two tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to put in three quarter teaspoon of yeast right there. Then I'm going to mix them uh, with just my uh, cooking wooden spoon. Then I will put in a quarter of salt a little later so that it's not in direct contact with the yeast. And then I will make a well in the center. I'm going to put in an egg. I like to include it in my bread just to make it a, a bit more balanced with some protein. And then I'm going to put in two tablespoons of salad oil. As you can see, our bread is really simple. You can make it at home. Uh, the ingredients are toned down to reduce on those calories. And then I'm going to start adding in my milk. And I will start with this wooden stick, a wooden spoon rather. <laughs> Uh, just a little to mix in the egg then I'll start kneading with my hands so that we get it to a soft dough. Yeah, so let's begin kneading with our hands as we put in milk a little at a time just to get it to a soft dough like I said. We got it to that soft dough like that. I'm now going to knead it on the surface for just a few minutes, like three, four minutes or so. Yeah, like that. So just keep kneading it. Sometimes you take it around your hands like that. Yeah, it's soft dough, it's not hard, but we just want it to be kneaded well enough before we bake it. So we'll do that for a few more minutes. Let me just put a few drops of oil there. I found that it helps. Uh, as we leave it there to cool, just a few. Yeah, so now we have our dough there. So we will cover it. You can use a clean towel or you can use clean film to do that. Let me use clean film today. Yeah, so now we've got it well covered like that. 
and then take it out to the sun if you're doing this during the day but if you're not doing it during the day you can do the microclimate I always do on this channel and I'll show you what I do. I have hot water right here and it's a quarter of this saucepan or sufuria so that it doesn't get the heat doesn't get directly onto our yeast uh, uh, killing it before it causes our dough to rise so what we will do is we will get it to a quarter like that and then again reduce the impact of that heat by covering it with a clean kitchen towel and then we will place this on top and allow it to prove for about an hour and then we will be back. This is one hour later and you can see it's doubled in size. So what I'll first do is I will grease the pan that we will use and then we will continue from there. I'm greasing a pan that's about 18 centimeters in diameter or seven inches. And so we will grease it all around and then continue. I'll dust it with a little flour like that and just take it around your pan so that it spreads all over the greased pan. And then what you can do is simply take the, dip the extra one out and then we have our pan ready. What we will do is we will now beat down our dough. It's actually doubled in size or even probably more. Just beat it down like that. So there we have our dough. Let's knead it a little. And again for a few minutes and then continue. What I'll basically do is roll it out like that because I want to divide it into six equal pieces. So we got it to that length really. So you can use a knife to divide or a scraper. I'll simply use my hands also just press in like that and you have it separated and then just get this into three equal pieces. I'm basically pressing with my hand. So I'm basically taking a piece and just folding it in to form that round scone. Like that. And then we will basically arrange it in our greased pan. So let's do that again for another one because we just want them to, to get them into that nice scone shape and then again arrange in our pan or sufuria like that. So let's do that to the rest of them. Here comes our foil paper. Again, we we'll cover it with foil paper and just to get it to proof again like that. So it's well covered. So I get again my micro environment for proofing with my hot water as you saw earlier. Place it on top like that and then give it about 20 to 25 minutes and then we will go ahead and bake on the jiko. So meanwhile, I'll go prepare my jiko. I have my well-lighted jiko right there. So uh, before I start, I am going to remove most of the coals from there and put it uh, on top of the lid, not all of them because this is a lot. My jiko is fairly big and if yours is small, uh, probably uh, the charcoal, all of it would be okay on top. But this one is really big so I'll put some of it on top and some of it 
elsewhere in a place that it is safe and always remember when using a jiko in the room where you're working let it be well uh, aerated as you know the windows are open because as you know jiko can be dangerous if you work with it in a room that is not well aired so just make sure all the windows are open that will keep you safe so i will get all this, this out and then we will continue so you can see i have barely left any coals on top very few because really bread will cook for a short time and also the jiko is also hot so you don't need so much and because my jiko is fairly big like i said i'm going to use this rack to help support my bread and place it on we are going to bake it for a total of 25 minutes or so 25 to 30 remember it depends on your jiko so uh, just time depending on your jiko let's begin doing this so those are the coals on top uh, and now we are going to time for 12 minutes fast because as you saw our bread scones are a bit up so they are going to brown on top before the entire bread cooks on the inside so let's time for 12 to 15 minutes come and check on them from 12 minutes and check if they have browned on top so that we remove the coals on top and continue baking for the rest of the time now for this amount of charcoal i've done about 18 minutes so like i said that's why i said start from 12 minutes to 15 actually to 20 but keep checking at, i like to check at intervals of three minutes so at 12 minutes 15 minutes 18 minutes because sometimes you're not just quite sure how your charcoal will behave so at 18 minutes it can either brown like that as you've seen and um, the rest of it now uh, we wait so what i'll do now that i've removed the charcoal so that it doesn't burn the top i'm simply going to cover with this lid but because i don't want the vapor to drop onto the bread i will slide it off slightly like that so that most of the vapor escapes and then we do the remaining seven to eight minutes and i'm sure our bread will be ready we've done about 25 minutes well maybe 26 because of the timing aspect and the transitions of timing so we just uh, do that with this tester you can use also a toothpick or a sharp knife uh, it's coming out clear so our bread is ready and uh, now we will get it out of here flip it over and then see how it looks like let's get to flip it over is also watching so we will just apply some much if you have butter as well that would be good just to keep this soft and supple really it is soft as you can see yes yeah, so I'm just applying some much right there like that all around and then we will be ready so just some much right there to keep it soft and supple like we said mm, so let's get it separate we see wow just look at that looking very soft just see that bouncy wow so let's get to see how it looks on the inside Red on the jiko, uh, looking very nice, soft, and I'm sure it's tasty. Uh, let me get my testers to tell me how it is. So, how is the bread? Really crunchy, huh? <laughs> how is it? So soft, mm -hmm. delicious. Mm -hmm. It's even better than what bread. Wow, you can hear that. It's better than store-bought. Mm -hmm. It's bread. better than bought bread. 
Yeah, so you want to try it out and you can see the recipe is simple, ingredients toned down. You're going to enjoy this one, I tell you. As you saw, we always enjoy this recipe of bread and please try it. I am telling you, you will enjoy it. You can use the same recipe in an oven or do it on the gas cooker without an oven the way we always do on this channel. And look out for the next recipe where I am doing uh, this recipe with a slight tinge, you know, just to give variety and creativity to your bread recipes. And meanwhile, check out this playlist where I have done several other bread scone uh, recipes, roll recipes that are again very simple, ingredients are toned down and you're going to enjoy your bread recipes a great deal. Thank you so much for joining me and until that next video, bye.